Hi there, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. My name is Melissa, and today we have Jorge Rodriguez, who's a solution specialist here at Encore, and he'll be talking about end-to-end -end resource scheduling in Dynamics 365 project operations. Um, just want to let you know, you can put any questions into the question pane. Um, if we can't get to them today, we can get back to you offline, and we will be recording this and send everyone the recording later on. And uh, I'll hand it over to you, Jorge. Thanks a lot, Melissa. I really appreciate it. Um, so today we're going to be talking about project operations and more specifically about how to perform research scheduling, which is one of the uh, awesome features that Project Operations has to offer. So I'm very excited to be here with you today and share some of my experience with, uh, with the Project Ops. Um, my name is Jorge Rodriguez and I am a Solution Specialist um, at Anchor. I specialize in the client engagement side of uh, the Microsoft stack of solutions. I've been with the company for a couple of years and before that I spent uh, time working in technology consulting uh, elsewhere. So that's a little bit about me. Um, here at Anchor, I've been uh, uh, fortunate enough to be part of a few projects uh, where we're implementing project operations. So a lot of this is based on my experience uh, on those projects. There's a few things that I want to cover today. Uh, the main two things are, I want to show you the schedule board and I want to show you the utilization board. But before we jump into that, I want to uh, go over at a high level, what are some of the prerequisite activities or configurations slash setup that you need to have performed in your system prior to really start uh, using the schedule board and then take advantage of the utilization board. So we'll spend some time on that at the beginning of the presentation. Uh, after that, I will show you how to create a resource requirement, which is the way that uh, Project Operations lets you put in a request for uh, a, a resource to fulfill a specific task in a project uh, based on a set number of criteria. After that, we'll be seeing how uh, a project manager or a scheduler can take advantage of the schedule board to assign someone to a project. We'll also be seeing how the schedule board can be utilized um, by the leadership of the company to see how, how, how busy their team are going to be in the future. So it's a great forecasting tool. And then at the end, I'm going to show you the utilization board that works hand in hand with the schedule board. The utilization board is uh, lets uh, project leadership and company leadership know uh, how uh, much uh, time someone has to meet it against uh, their their goal, right? So it's a great way to see how how busy the team uh, has actually been. So if you use the schedule board and the utilization board, uh, both of them will give you. Uh, the first one, a forecast, and the second one will tell you the actuals of uh, how much uh, time someone has actually spent against uh, a forecasted project. Okay, so that is uh, what I would like to cover today. Uh, let's get a start with the prerequisite activity. So at this point, I'm going to exit my slideshow and I'm going to be uh, going with um, my uh, the demo environment that I had set up for this purpose. So just give me one quick second here. All right. Okay. So I want to first talk about some of the prerequisite activities before we get into the scheduling piece. Um, there are a few different things that you need to have done in your project operations environment before you can take advantage of this functionality. Uh, the first thing is you need to uh, have uh, set up uh, bookable resources in your environment. And what are bookable resources? Uh, bookable resources re uh, represent employees that you're going to be using to uh, assign to different projects. And then these, these resources uh, will be able to enter timing expenses against the project. 
So as you can see in my environment, and I'm going to make this a little bit bigger for you, I have set up a handful of bookable resources that uh, we're going to be using uh, for these demos. So that's uh, the first thing that you uh, want to do in your environment, um, set up your employees slash bookable resources. Now I'm going to start drilling into these bookable resources records. So I'm going to use myself for uh, as an example for most of the presentation. So if I click on my bookable resource record, okay, there's a couple of different things that are very important that we're going to be using uh, when scheduling and so on. So the first thing is that uh, you need to have a schedule uh, work hours for each of your resources or employees. So this is something that you can do in bulk or something that you can do individually, depending on uh, whether or not someone has uh, different working hours than their colleagues. So uh, for my example, as you can see that I have set myself with a working schedule from uh, nine to five, um, Monday to Friday. Okay, so that's uh, that. This is very important because uh, work uh, time availability is one of the main criteria that we're going to be using uh, to schedule people on products. Okay, and uh, the important thing here is that uh, the system is looking at how many workable hours I have in my day. So nine to five. Uh, so that goes around eight hours a day. Uh, if someone works uh, less than uh, eight hours, for example, as a part-time employee, you probably need to do this between 9 to 1 p.m. So the time really is not the important thing here. The important thing is the amount of hours that an employee is able to work uh, during a day. In my case, I've set up uh, myself for eight hours, uh, Monday to Friday. So that's one of the first things that uh, we also want to do after setting a book of a resource making sure that the work hours are uh, set up. Now, the other thing that we want to do, and it's uh, another of the important create criteria that we're going to be using to scheduling resources, is we want to define the roles that each of our employees uh, can uh, perform in our company. So if I navigate to the project service tab uh, within the bookable resource, um, record here, I can see that there is a subgrid where I can define uh, which roles I, as a bookable resource, can play. So let me just open the different screen here. And then let me go to the roles section. So for my demo, I have set up Again, a handful of roles that I'm going to be using. I have set up an architect role, designer role, project management, uh, team member, and technician. So your company can have uh, uh, any number of roles uh, that people can uh, can play during a, a, a project um, um, implementation. So in my case, I have associated my bookable resource record with two different roles. I can play the, the role of an architect and I can play the role of a designer. And again, this is another criteria that we're going to be using uh, when scheduling someone for a specific task that requires a specific skill set. So work hours and roles, two very important things that you want to have set up uh, before you start using the scheduling uh, capabilities. Um, now, the other thing that you want to do here inside the book of a resource is you want to define a target utilization for each one of your resources. Um, so uh, what is this? Uh, if your company uh, does or, or delivers project-based work, then you'll know that utilization, how, how much uh, uh, bookable time a resource uh, charges against a project is, is very, very, very important to the bottom line of the company. So what project operation does is it allows you to define a target utilization of billable work that you want a resource to hit uh, per day, per week, per month. Uh, in my case, I have set up myself with a target utilization of 80%, which means that uh, eighty percent of my working hours, I should be billing uh, to chargeable 
uh, for billable work. Okay, so you can define that on the bookable resource card itself, or you can do it on the roles. So if I go back to my roles and I double click uh, to, to open my role, I can see that I have defined the target utilization of 80% for this role. Another important thing here is that you can also set up the billing type for this role, uh, whether this is chargeable, non-chargeable, uh, or complementary, okay? Now you may be wondering, so what happens if I have set up a target utilization on the bookable resource specifically, and also another one on the role? The system will take uh, the target utilization on the resource as being uh, the, the norm of what it looks like for some uh, computation that is going to be performing uh, later down the line. So, Targeted utilization is something else uh, that you want to have set up for each one of your uh, bookable resources here. Right, so those are three things that you want to have set up inside a bookable resource, but there's also a couple of other things that you will need outside the bookable resources. So uh, one of them, and I'm going to open another tab for this, is you want to have set up a sales price list and a cost price list. So if I navigate to the sales area of uh, my project operations environment, and then I go to price list. So let me make this a little bit bigger for you again. You can see that I have two different price lists here. Uh, so the price lists are where you're going to define how much you're charging for a specific roles. Uh, in my case, I'm using hour as my unit of measure, and that is the unit of measure that you're most likely going to be using. So uh, I'm going to take a look at the sales price list. Okay. Now, if I navigate to the role prices, I can see that based on the roles that I have set up in my system, I have defined how much I'm going to be charging for each role, okay? And there's a few more things that you can do in the sales practice, but again, uh, we are only covering the prerequisite activities at a high level. Uh, there's a lot more uh, around local resources and sales practice, but at this point, uh, we're not focusing on this. We're just seeing what are the things that you uh, are going to need to have done before, um, utilizing the scheduling capabilities, okay? So uh, defining a price list, both a cost price list and a sales price list uh, using the roles that you have defined uh, in the system uh, is also something very important that is going to come into play when your resource is going to start um, submitting time against a particular project and project task, okay? So the next thing that you're going to need, and we're going to be uh, using this uh, quite a bit. Now let me refresh this, or I can navigate out of this, and you can see how I get into that. So if I navigate to the project um, area of my um, environment, and then I click on the project section, you're going to see that I have a couple of projects that I have set up for this uh, demo. And the project record is something that you're going to spend a lot of time uh, using if you're a project manager, uh, because the project is the place where you're going to define uh, your work breakdown structure or project schedule. And then uh, using that project schedule, then we're going to go ahead and, and perform our resource requirements. So this is the last thing that you want to have set up. So I'm going to open this first project that I'm going to use as an example here. Uh, we're not going to spend too much time talking about the project. Uh, just know that this is the place where uh, you are going to be building your work right down structure or project schedule. So as you can see here, I have already uh, a work right down structure, a, a very high level one, a very simple one set up uh, for this project that we're going to be using for this demo. But here I can define things such as the name of the task or the phase, the start date, the finish date, and then the system is going to automatically calculate 
uh, the effort and duration. This is a time to call. This is where our process is going to start. The first two examples, you can see that I, I already have a specific resource assigned to this, which is uh, myself. Uh, when we start the process, we usually don't start with assigning someone specifically to a project a task because uh, it may be we may be still months before the, uh, the the specific task that we want to resource to start. So at that point, we start by adding a generic resource. That is really where the process starts. Before I jump into that, I want to mention one last thing that you need to have in conjunction for your project before you are ready to start submitting time uh, and expenses, which is uh, a very important piece uh, if you uh, want to get those billings out to your clients. Okay, So each project should be associated to a contract. So again, uh, I'm, I'm going to my contract. Uh, by navigating to the sales tab on the project record. As you can see here, my project has been associated with one contract. And uh, just to show you really quickly why a contract is important, the contract is the place in the project operations system uh, functionality where we define what type of, uh, uh, or of billing we are doing for a specific project. So in my case, you can see that uh, my billing method is time and materials. It could also be fixed price. So the contract is the place where that is defined. Okay? And then again, there's a lot more to chat about contracts and projects, but I'm um, just giving you the high level view of what is needed before we start with our resourcing process. Okay? So now let's get uh, to it. So how do I perform a resource requirement? So for that, you will navigate to the task uh, tab here. And I'm going to use my phase three uh, task as an, an example, okay? So uh, let's start by defining a start and end date. Let's say that this task needs to start tomorrow on the 12th. And I know that it's only going to take the resource a couple of days. So it should end on the 13th. Okay, I always like to save every, every time I, I make a change. Uh, okay, so now I, as a project manager, maybe it's not my role to assign a resource uh, for this. Maybe there's another person in the company that does that. Maybe it is a resource, uh, another project ma a manager uh, or a project scheduler than that. So uh, I would want to send a request for this other person to find me the right resource who is available between the 12th and the 13th uh, to play, uh, to to fulfill this task. Uh, for this, I need to provide some more information, for example, what type of role I'm looking for this, okay? But to do that, I click on this icon, assign this task. Then I click on the ellipsis here and click add generic resource, okay? So this is going to allow me to, uh, to, um, to let the scheduler uh, what else I'm looking for in this resource besides the start and finish date. Uh, in this example, I'm going to focus on the role. Okay. So by default, this always is going to be default to team member. If you remember the role that I showed you at the beginning, I'll get to choose from those roles. So in my case, I think I need an architect. That's what I've added uh, the architect uh, piece here. That's just to uh, show you that. Uh, you can select the role depending on the task that uh, you want to uh, get uh, fulfilled. So I'm going to select architect. I'm not going to change anything else. If you're using resourcing unit, which are, uh, if your company uh, has different locations, you could change this. I'm not going to change that. In my case, the, I'm really just focus on getting an architect that is available from the 12th to the 13th. At this point, I will click save and close. And as you can see here, uh, this assigned to field has been updated to the uh, to say architect one, which means that a generic resource is now associated to this task. So no a specific individual. Okay, so I'm going to save this, and then now to generate the actual resource requirement, you will need to go to the team task. Okay, I always like to refresh this. Okay. And 
you will need to find the uh, the the um, the line that matches the information that you added. Okay, it's usually going to be at the bottom here. So in this case, I can see that this is for the architect role that uh, needs to be available from the 12th to the 13th. So this is enough information for my scheduler to send me someone that fulfills uh, this criteria. But uh, to make it available for them, I need to select this line and then click on generate requirement. Okay, I can see that the result requirement for the uh, selected team member has been uh, generated. All right, so at this point, if I'm a project manager, I am now waiting for the scheduler to send me back someone uh, that fulfills my criteria. In some, com in some companies, uh, the job of the project manager and the, uh, and the scheduler may be the same, so maybe the same person doing this, it may be two separate people. So then the next piece is using the schedule board to find a uh to to fulfill the requirement that was sent to me okay so the schedule board is located under the resource area if i click on the schedule board here and just refresh it okay i like to use the gun view there's also a list view and i like to use the daily view you can uh view this by week by month i like to use the daily view you can define uh uh the the start a date of the information that is shown. Let's select the start of this week. And what you see here are all of the employees in my organization. Uh, this schedule board offers a way for me to see, uh, to forecast the work that they have uh, coming up. So as you can see, uh, in this week at least, I am the only resource that's already fully booked. So I uh, booked 40 hours for this project. I can see that there's uh, other resources that are available, okay? So this tool can be used by, uh, uh, by, by team leadership uh, to determine how busy their team is. Uh, you can change it from days to weeks, okay, to months to really see what the pipeline looks like in terms of uh, how busy your team is going to be. So this can be very powerful if you're looking to make decisions in terms of bringing on new talent or maybe reshuffling some of the workload for some people. If you see that Orchid Care is booked for the next month, but maybe Eric is not, you can maybe think about uh, reshuffling some of these work. So this is a very uh, uh, great way visually uh, to visually see uh, how busy your team is forecasted to be, okay? So going back, for example, I'm going to change this to my daily view, start time at nine. And okay, so uh, I had sent my resource requirement to the scheduler. Now the scheduler, when they navigate to the schedule board, they're going to see all of the open uh, requirements here at the bottom. You can see open requirements. The one that I just submitted is here at the top. So a scheduler can go ahead and uh, uh, schedule someone manually, but project operations actually offers a way uh, uh, an assistant of sorts to help you find the, the right person on your team who fulfills the right criteria. So in my case, I need someone that's available 16 hours from the 12th to the 13th that, that uh, is able to play the architect role. So if I click on find availability, right, and then I like to always use the GAN view. I think it's more visually, uh, it's, uh, it's better. So what I can see here is now the system is recommending two different people based on the criteria that I have. And the most important piece of my criteria is this, the starting end date, the amount of hours that are able to work and the role here, okay? So if I would, uh, would go back to the bookable resources and look at Justin Kimber and Roy McDonald, I would realize that, for example, Justin, if I navigate to project service here, I can see that Justin can play the architect role and Roy can play the architect role as well, uh, but also Jorge can play the architect role. And so why Jorge is not here? Because if you remember from uh, the board uh, that I showed you before, I am fully booked for this week already. So the system knows that I'm fully booked, therefore it's not 
is not showing, uh, is not displaying me as one of the options, okay? So now at this point, the scheduler would select either Justin or Roy. Uh, they're both available, they, they both can play the architecture uh, role. Uh, so at this point, I would just select uh, Justin Timber if I want, okay? And then I'm going to book Justin for the two days, eight hours each. So that should take care of my requirement. Uh, booking a status here, hard is if you know that for sure Justin is going to be working on this uh, task. Soft and propose are the same, um, the same thing. Uh, you're not booking Justin for sure, but you want to put a placeholder on them. Uh, and then uh, the booking method, uh, you can book it for the remainder requirement. Uh, you may decide that you want to book Justin for a day, Roy for a day. In that case, you would use this, or you can book it for the full requirement. So in that case, I'll, I'll use full requirement and then click on book. All right, so as you can see here, Justin changed from being eight, available for eight hours to be available for zero hours. So if I click on exit the schedule assistant, you can see that this has been updated. So now uh, take a look here. I can see that uh, now Justin has been booked for these two days. So he's fully booked for these two days. Uh, so as you can see, this uh, is updated right away. And then if I refresh this, you can also see that the requirement that I just fulfilled is closed because I have fulfilled the entirety of their requirement. Uh, this view should only display the open requirements so that the scheduler know what they still need to perform. The last thing I want to show you here is if I navigate back to my project, to my task, I can see that the name has been replaced from that generic uh, name with the role to the actual person that is going to be uh, fulfilling this requirement. This will mean that at this point, Justin is able to start entering time and expenses against this project which takes me to my, the last thing that I want to show you is the utilization board. So you can find the utilization board on the resources area as well. Uh, so these, similar to the schedule board, the utilization board displays all of my employees here. I can also change uh, the view from daily to weekly to monthly. I can define the start date that is shown. Uh, but the big difference between the schedule board and the utilization board is that the schedule board is showing me a forecasted view of the amount of work that I believe my employees are going to have. Whereas the utilization board is showing me uh, the actual time that someone has submitted and has been approved. So uh, we won't have time to cover the time, the time entry and approval process, but what you can see here, if you focus on this line for, for myself, Jorge Rodriguez, is that these percentages are updated as soon as I enter time against a project and then someone approves this time. So at this, at this point, the system considers uh, these entries as, as, as uh, not closed, but they, they're already being approved, so they're ready to be billed to the client. So at this point, the system can say with confidence, okay, uh, Jorge submitted time, was approved, that means that uh, historically uh, he worked, for example, only 25% of the time that he was forecasted to work on this Monday. And this forecasted number comes from, if you remember uh, my card, my target utilization is 80 hours, sorry, 80%. And if you remember my, uh, my work calendar says that I'm able to work eight hours a day. So the system is looking for me to at least be uh, submitting six billable hours a day to fulfill that 80% uh, utilization um, goal that I have. So if I take a look on the Wednesday, you can see the different colors here. So green means that uh, I have to be submitted enough billable work uh, to be above my 80% target, therefore I'm green. For the Tuesday, you can see the yellow. The yellow means that I have submitted uh, hours to be very close to that 80% target, but not quite. And here on the Monday, you can see red 
25% because I've committed only enough time to be at 25% of my target utilizations. I'm way below my goal. So uh, this, again, is a great tool for team members to see if their employees are uh, actually hitting that target utilization that they have set up for them, uh, it can aid on the decision making, right? So that's uh, everything that I want to show today. Um, just looking at the time, we're over time already, but we did get to cover uh, the, the, the very important pieces of scheduling resources. So thank you very much for your time. I find uh, I hope you found this valuable. Uh, we won't have time to do questions right now, but if there's any other questions, we can get to you back uh, offline. So thank you so much for your attention today. Great, thank you, Jorge. And yes, thank you everyone. Have a great rest of your day.